Friends, Romans, countrymen, Merry Christmas. How are you all doing? Uh, it's been a while since I put up a video, but uh, I wanted to do a Christmas video, at least. At the very least. Although, I honestly don't know whether this will be up by the end of Christmas Day because I'm recording it on in the, in the, in the, in the evening at Christmas because I spent um, a good time earlier today, for those of you who don't already know, I did mention it on Twitter, um, I was trying to record a Age of Empires uh, random map game uh, as a Christmas subscriber special type thing, uh, but unfortunately because Age of Empires is such an old game, uh, it just wasn't possible to do. Uh, every time I tried to record it, some new problem kind of came up and I wasn't able to do it in the end. Uh, so, this is the consolation prize. A lot of you are Age of Empires fans, but also a lot of you seem to be quite fond of the Roman Serectum videos I did ages ago. So, here's a little bit of Roman on Celt action. Um, we're doing a small little battle here. Um, I am the Romans, defending a village from the nasty, nasty rebel Celts. The scum. We have come to defile our mighty village, and we're going to defend it. Our, we have a, a force of inferior size, however I'm hoping good old Roman training and uh, a bit of ingenuity can see us through the day. Uh, so without further ado, let's, um, let's begin the battle, shall we? Right, yes, as we can see, the Celtic Horde is deployed across from us here. We've got... Some Bellavachi infantry, some more Bellavachi infantry, some Tecto Sages heavy swordsmen that look kind of nasty. Um, some Belgic champions which look very nasty. Some Batavian infantry, uh, some Volky axemen, uh, some more heavy spearmen. What have we got at the back here? Some he Belgic heavy spearmen, and some Batavian infantry, and we have armored Belgic general somewhere. On a chariot. Where is he? There he is. There's the blighter. Crikey, he looks like one of the dwarves from The Hobbit. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this is the bastard we need to kill. While protecting our little village as best we can. It seems to have three entrances. One here, one here, and one here. Though I'm guessing the Celts will probably just try and charge straight in the front. If they're clever, they'll try and go around the side as well, perhaps. Uh, he's the square in the middle we've got to defend. To our dust, dying breath. So, what have we got? Here's our general. Uh, no, that's the standard bearer. Here's the general. Uh, we've got some legionaries from uh, apparently Legion number 20, Valeria Victrix. Apparently. They even have the little thing on their banner there with a the boar. Um, that's who these guys are. And we've got some more legionaries. More legionaries. And, ah yeah, we've got some Dacian auxiliaries as well with these kind of cool little scaled um, cuirass things here. They should prove quite useful. They're not as good as our legionaries, but they'll do the job. And we also got some archers, which I think are from Thrace. Thracum Sagittariorum, I think is Thracian archers. So, And we've got these little babies here which will hopefully be what clinches the deal for us. Um, they are stone throwing siege ballistas uh, which hopefully will be able to do lots and lots of nasty damage to the Celts as long as we can keep them protected and at a decent range. Um, hopefully we can use these to take out some of the Celts best units which will uh, given the opportunity, make quite a mess of our auxiliaries and probably a bit of a mess of our legionaries as well, because these guys are very experienced. Um, they're good fighters. So, let's get ourselves set up, shall we? Um, best plan here is going to be to try and bottle bottleneck them in the streets and then hit them repeatedly with our archers and our uh, ballisters. So, let's get the general set up over here. Let's get our legionaries at the front. In fact, let's see if we, how long we can keep them outside the village to begin with. So let's get you guys set up here. Or as close to the entrance as I can get you. There we go. Um, let's keep you in guard mode. 
Thankfully, they don't seem to have any missile infantry, although some of the spearmen might actually be able to throw javelins at us. I'm not really sure. Some of the Celts are quite good at that. They come with... Yeah, see, look, these guys here, they've got javelins um, alongside their swords, so we might get a bit of missile fire, but hopefully not so much that we have to go into the old Testudo like this, because although the Testudo is great against missiles, um, if they charge us while we're in Testudo formation, they'll make a complete mess of us. So, um, rather that did not happen. Stay in guard mode, guys. I need you to keep your formation and hold them off as long as possible. We'll have... What have we got here? So we got one, two, one, two, three up there. We'll have number four. Number four... We're going to put you over here to see if you can guard the other entrance, just in case the Celts decide to try and go around that way. Um, let's put the general a bit further up there. Let's put the balusters. Now, they need to be kind of close because, uh, in th well, in theory, I could put them all the way back here. They And they might be able to shoot the Celts. And, in fact, we can just check the range here. When you scroll across like this, when the arrow next to the cursor is green, that means that the area you're pointing at is in range of the balusters. See, they've got quite a fair amount of range. Um, and as you can see, it turns red again when you get closer to them because that's inside the minimum range. Like, they can't fire that close. Now, you see, as, as you can see, our uh, our legionary fellows up at the front here, they're well within the range of our balances. And because balances are incredibly inaccurate, there's a good chance, if we put them down here, that they could actually fire at our own guys and kill quite a lot of them. So I'm going to move them up quite a bit closer. Um, there's still no guarantee, they can sometimes misfire and go kafunk straight into your own guys, but hopefully it won't happen, because it doesn't happen very often. And uh, essentially what we want to be doing is move them back a bit further. Yeah, that puts the minimum range about there-ish, which means we'll be able to get quite a few of them on the way in. Uh, yeah, there we go. Should move them forward a little bit more just for safety's sake. There we go. Let's move the general forward a bit as well. Let's keep him within range of our frontline troops so we can give them a bit of encouragement if they need it. We'll put the archers here, just so they've got plenty of range on these guys. Yep. As soon as they start moving, they should be able to hit them. Um, our auxiliaries. Auxiliaries. We've got three units of them. Again, I'm going to port two of them right here, and the third can sit over here and back these guys up. Hopefully, even if the Celts don't decide to come around this way, these guys stood here will act as a deterrent to them trying to flank me, um, which I would not enjoy in the slightest. Wouldn't be a lot of fun, it has to be said. Um, actually, you know what, you guys, will move you forward to here. Um, these legionaries here, before we start, you can fire at will. In fact, actually, you know what? We won't put that. I'll put fire at will on at the very last moment, so we, where we can see the whites of their eyes, so to speak, so we can get the most hits. Uh, you guys, skirmish mode off. Fire arrows, fire at will. You guys, you want to fire flaming bolts, but not at will. Um, will never did anything to you, damn it. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Anyway, so, what's that building there? Oh, it's just labelled building. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, in fact, it doesn't... Oh, wait, yes, it does have a door. I assume it must be the barracks or something. There's another one over here. They look kind of military. But anyway, maybe that's where our soldiers have been staying at, these three barracks things here. Thankfully, the Celts don't have any siege weapons, so they're not going to go smashing anything up. Um, worst risk we have to suffer is our own balusters misfiring and blowing up a bunch of buildings of our own, but hopefully that won't happen. That would be kind of bad, but there it is. Someone seems to have lit a fire. I don't know why. Put that fire out! Put it out! It's against regulations! So anyway, let's go! And try not to get massacred by the Celtic hordes as they begin to close in. Right, ready guys, get ready! Fire! Ah, my archers are already shooting off, which is good. You guys selected. So yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you're all having a good day, or have had a good day, as the case may be, or having a good week at least. Um, I've had a, nice, a pretty nice day. I got some nice things. Uh, I got Prometheus and Dark Knight Rises on DVD, and I got The Lord of the Rings on Blu-ray, which is pretty neat. Neat. Wanted that for a while. Ready and throw them javelins. 
Oh god, here comes the horde. Are they going to charge straight in or are they going to stop and throw some missiles at us? No, they're going to charge straight on in. Crazy motherfuckers. However, they've not sent any guys around the back. Their general's still hanging back with his chariot for now, but... Oh boy! Here they come. Yes, victory is a distinct possibility. Not really what I wanted to hear, in all honesty, but there it is. Hold the line, damn it! Stop getting pushed back! Oh, hello, now they are sending some people around the side. The fools. Some Belgic champions. You guys, throw some sticks at them. Go on. Thwack. Now charge. General, you can move forward. These ballasters are essentially useless now, unfortunately. Um, and offer a bit of encouragement. Yes, our auxiliaries are in the battle now, well and truly. Not so great, is it? Right, you can break guard formation and you can try and envelop them slightly. How's the formation looking? Yeah, we're not in a good spot, really. We're apparently frightened by the chariots as well, which isn't particularly nice, it has to be said. Hopefully, we can deal with these miscreants over here, then run around and try and flank the enemy. Count them from behind. Yeah, defeat seems certain, so those Belgic champions are not having a good day. That much is certain. Oh, the Celtic hordes over here seem to be doing alright, which I don't like at all in the slightest. Balance of forces is evenly matched, although I can deal with. Hopefully, our superior discipline will hold the day. And these guys will just get so exhausted and low on morale that they'll run away. May not be the case, however. We may well lose. We may well indeed lose. This is me, after all. I'm not particularly adept at this sort of thing. Better at Total War games than most, I suppose. Certainly better than I am at most like base building RTSs like StarCraft or something. But um, you know, it's been a long time since I've seriously sat down and played um, Rome Total War, so I'm a bit rusty, really. Could be, could very well be committing some very elementary mistakes. So yeah, it's Christmas evening at the minute. Um, kind of. Everyone's gone off to do their own thing, waiting for Christmas dinner to be cooked still. We're a bit weird in our family. We actually eat Christmas dinner in the evening. Most people have it for lunch. Um, but there it is. Personally, I prefer to simply... Oh dear, they're killing some of our archers. That's not nice. Um, personally, I prefer to have the lion actually earlier on in the, in the day and then have Christmas dinner later on. But that's just me, you know. Um... You know, I stopped getting up at like 7 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day when I was about, you know, 15. So, um... It's been many years since I grew out of that. How are we doing? Yeah, oh, you're still frightened by the damn chariots, aren't you? Right, I'm going to take a bit of a risk here and force these ballistas to fire on some of these Celts. Um, I need to move them back first, though. Are they going to comply or is the pathfinding going to screw itself up? Uh, looks like they're going to do it, which is nice. Belgic champions are still refusing to die faster than I'd like them to. Um, see if we can pull the auxiliaries out there and try and get these guys surrounded at least. Maybe if charged to the rear prior to a... well, following a bit of javelin fire to the rear. Um, throwing javelins at the rear of an enemy unit is a surefire way to kill a whole bunch of them, even if they're, if they're armoured. Because uh, missile attacks to the rear of a unit in Rome Total War does extra damage. Worth remembering. How are these ballasters doing? Still too close, apparently. Move you back a bit further. This is really risky, though, this is. Right, General. For a bit more encouragement. Oh boy, we are stretched thin. This is not not good. Although victory is a distinct possibility apparently for our Dacian auxiliaries, so they seem to be doing all right. So they're holding themselves together, which is nice. Um, you guys come out of guard mode as well. 
Stick it to him. Stop pushing back. Main thing we want to worry about is morale. Eager and tired. Okay, tired, not so great. Eager, we can deal with. Right, throw some javelins. Do it. Do it. Good lads. And again. What are you all doing? Get on with it, come on. You don't have all day. Oh, that was rubbish. Fine, charge. Or oh, don't charge. Slowly edge towards them instead, you numpties. Fine, whatever. Just as long as they die, I don't really care. Um... Right, you fellas, can you fire on at least some of these Celts? Aha, uh -huh. maybe you can fire on the general. We might kill a few of our own guys in the process, but it's worth a try. Um, let's turn off flaming ammo, which might reduce some of the collateral damage, hopefully. If we completely misjudge this. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll switch back to flaming ammo. Um... If we seem to be doing okay. The main thing to worry about with flaming arrows is that it's far less accurate than just throwing a few rocks. Hopefully, though, you should just screw with their morale a bit. Steady, yeah. They're steady rather than eager now, which is good. You should try and find a group of them that's really f sort of cl close to the back. Try and get our, our guys aiming as far back as possible. Um, these lot, this lot over here look like a promising bunch of candidates. Right, I'm going to take a risk here and fire the flaming bolts of doom. How are these this lot doing? Oh yes, these Belgic champions are pretty screwed. Their days are very much numbered. Oh, the battle continues to rage. So, you guys are going to fire in sometime today. Oh, good shot. Oh, bad shot. You killed a few of our legionaries, you bastards. Improve your aim. It's also starting to get a bit foggy, interestingly. I didn't realise the weather changed mid-match in this. It's been a while since I... Oh, God! Oh, God! You just massacred some of our own guys. What the hell are you playing at? Stop, 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 stop. Enough. Good Lord. How about those guys instead? You people are you you're insane, you bloody artillery crews. You're mad, I tell you. Come on, get on with it. I said fire. Not stand around doing nothing. Can you hit someone else? I think they're all still too close. Let's just click on one of them and see what they need to do. They need to move back a bit, perhaps? Alright, you're just going to stay there, aren't you, and do nothing. Are you out of ammo? No, you're not. So what's your problem, hmm? Rally again, please. Whoa, no, 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 no. What are you doing? You're not going into combat, sir. No. That's our last fucking resort, that is. These are all still eager. That's not what I want to see. I want to see them panicked. Where are archers? Do we have any of them left? We do have a few left. Fall back a bit. I don't want you caught in the melee. Come on, you bastards. Oh, this is so going to kill some of our dudes, isn't it? Might be worth it, though, if we can just panic them just enough. I think they might have wiped... Yeah, they wiped out our guys on the left. That's not good. Although that does mean there'll be potentially less collateral damage if we aim to the left. Come on, wind these things up. That's it. Good lads. Oh, well, you fired a bit too far in the other direction now. That's not exactly ideal. It has to be said. Oh, 
Oh, nearly, nearly. You nearly had it. Keep it up, though. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Yeah, good job, good job. Steady, unhappy over taking casualties. Right, we're making an impact in more than one sense. Oof, that was close. Oh, Jesus. Nearly hit our general. Oh, well done. Well done, sir. Oh, you have got to be kidding. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I knew something like that would happen. It's Sod's Law, isn't it? Oh, well. Good night, sweet prince. Your sacrifice will be remembered. Well, as long as we win, anyway. In which case, it'll probably fade into distant memory. Um... Come on, will you please hurry up and kill these bastards? If you take any longer, we might lose. In fact, honestly, that feels like a pretty foregone conclusion by now anyway, but uh, there's no harm in hoping. Oh god, they've been reduced to like a line of a couple of dudes backed up against this wall. Fighting, shaken and exhausted. Yeah, these guys are fucking screwed. Shaken, yeah, it's our de general being killed is what's done it. Yeah, the... Archers are already routing. This whole artillery business was probably rather foolish, but never mind. Try and hit the general. If you can hit their general and kill him, we might just be able to turn this around miraculously. Let's Provided the uh, AI doesn't bug out for aiming. Which it might be. Oh, yeah, yeah, go, you do that. You murder more of our own guys. Well done. Idiots. Yeah, and they're routing now. Thanks for that, assholes. How's, how's it going over here? Oh my god, they're finally dead. Right now, run. Run your little asses off. It's too late, but run anyway. The day is lost, I fear. Although these brave little bastards are still fighting, bless them. The general's bodyguard is getting stuck in what's left of it. Yeah, kill these chariot guys, actually. See if we can try and snipe their general. Well. Oh dear. The line has collapsed. You guys are too late. You wasted so much time dealing with that one unit of freaking champions over there. Well. I guess these guys can open fire willy nilly now. It doesn't really matter, does it? As long as they actually do it in time. Okay, or run, you fools. Come on. I'm going to take down as many of them as I can with me. Don't! Oh, good God. They're that far away and you still manage to shoot a bunch of our own guys instead. What's going on here, anyway? <laughs> the general's bodyguard is bravely holding the line. When nobody else can be bothered to. Come on. Before they charge up into your face, come on. One more volley would be nice. Come on. You've got about 30 more seconds, guys, and then you're dead. Are these auxiliary interfering with your movement? Is that something that's going on here? Need you fellas to open fire now. Come on. I don't care if you miss. It literally does not even matter if you miss. It's that rich of a target environment. Oh! Oh yes! That's what I'm talking about, okay? 
Can you get off one more? those guys with some of the Uggs in here and still get these guns firing. Don't leave your post, that's all I am asking of you right now. Keep firing the damn ballisters. Good man. Oh, there's nothing for you to fire right now, is there? See if we can get you moved back there. Or are you just going to run off and leave the ballisters? Probably going to do that, aren't you? Oh yes, good man. The enemy general is dead. His men know their doom approaches. Killed the enemy general. Right now, you guys need to charge into their rear. And if by some miracle we can salvage this, you'll all get fucking medals. Uh, these guys are all still eager. Oh, there's a few shaking at the front there. Impetuous. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. We are screwed. There's no breaking these guys' morale. Well, it was a valiant effort. Although I kind of figured, since we were so gravely outnumbered, we'd probably lose this, in all honesty. But it was worth a try. quite possible that having the extra legionary in the auxilia that were over there in the fighter but here at the beginning might have tipped the balance but uh, hindsight's a beautiful thing at the end of the day I mean that said if they dealt with these guys faster then they could have come back round and flanked these guys while the melee at the front was still going on but uh, unfortunately not Can you please... Oh, uh, right, I see you've abandoned the balusters. Can we get back on the balusters, perhaps? No, 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 it looks like it's not going to happen. Well, the victory apparently is almost a certainty for these guys over here. They seem completely untroubled by the fact that we are losing terribly. They're even eager, in spite of the fact that they're exhausted. Which is nice. So, well, um, I guess I might as well mention it now, seeing as I hadn't already. We did manage to, in fact, reach 2,000 subscribers, which was quite a milestone. Um, there's not much point in putting up arbitrary milestone videos sometimes, but uh, it's nice to recognize sometimes. And uh, I think it's quite epic, really. We managed to get from 1,500 to 2,000 in a remarkably short amount of time, it has to be said. And uh, I'm dead chuffed, really. A little community of sorts is growing, which is good, you know. In fact, um, this last couple of weeks I've been particularly um, surprised at just how, because we, we managed to hit 2,000 and then within about a week or two we managed to hit 2,100 an hour, I think. Last time I looked we were at around 2,130. Um, that is ridiculous. That's an amazing amount of growth in the channel, and I'm quite pleased, frankly. Very pleased, in fact. Um, you know, wouldn't be much of a channel without the fans, I suppose, at the end of the day. So, uh, wow, bless these archers. are still going, aren't they? Valorous buggers to the end, I suppose. This lot still fighting for their lives. The only problem I have with this mod is that the, the combat lasts so damn long. I mean, it's more realistic in a sense, I suppose, but um, I honestly prefer vanilla roams. Often swift, but brutal combat. Um, you may, it forced you to think a lot quicker, um, and tactics became a lot more important. Right now, with with Roma Serectum, I mean, there, I know there, I know there, I believe there are sub mods to try and make the combat a little more brief and less lengthy, like this. Um, but the main problem I have with Roma Serectum is just how ponderous the battles are. Um, certainly a big long campaign, especially with the number of battles you get into Roma Serectum with, with its uh, zero turn recruitment, can often become a serious chore. 
um, unfortunately. The alternative, of course, is to use the one turn recruitment uh, option. However, you forego, when you use that, you forego basically all the um, custom scripts for the different campaigns. Um, especially that's a problem when you're playing as the Romans because, well, it means you don't get a lot of the rebellion events and things, all the great late game stuff that happens. So it's a bit of a shame, really. But there it is. This could be I could be wrong, however, and they've updated this since then. I mean, I think the current version I'm using here is probably a bit outdated. Really. I downloaded it quite a while ago. I'm not sure how much they've updated it since. Uh, probably a fair bit. The mod is far from bug free. Although that said, it's remarkably stable. The team that made it put a lot of effort, and I mean a lot of effort, into making sure it, making sure it was stable and thoroughly beta tested before it came out. Um, but uh, you should expect no less, really, from the um, the Total War modding community. These guys love to complain, after all, whenever a Total War game comes out that's even the remote is a bit bu buggy. So, thankfully, they've avoided becoming hypocrites uh, in this case and have produced an incredibly stable, um, fully functional and gorgeous, frankly, mod. I mean, look at look at these guys. Look at the polygon poly count on these guys. It must be higher than half the units in Medieval 2, really. They certainly look nicer than the units in Medieval 2. The texture work on these is fantastic. Um, and the performance impact is pretty negligible, really. The mo most, of the, most of the performance impact comes from, uh, I think, the, uh, the new environments. So you look at these... Um, I mean, this is a first for Rome Total War, isn't it, really? Trees that actually look like real trees. Like, if we... I think we have a few over here. These are the... These are a few vanilla trees here. These... These... these examples here, I believe. That might be modded in or not, I can't tell really, but uh, this one here, for example, that's a that's a tree from the original game. It's a bit um, basic looking, isn't it? Let's be honest. And these over here. And look at the texture on that truck, it's hideous. Fine for the time, but these days not really so much. Bloody hideous. But you've got these over here, these are all smaller pine trees over here, or firs, or whatever they are. And you've got these big ass ones here. And it looks fantastic. It brings the battlefields to life in a way that they weren't in the original Rome Total War. Um, the battlefields were very flat and kind of lifeless and did not re really resemble very much the, the sort of terrain that they would be fighting on, I suppose, in real life. Limitations of the time and all that, but um, I'm really quite impressed. Um, it offers a better... Romus Rectum, quite honestly, offers a better Total War experience than some of the Total War games that of late that have actually come out. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Empire Total War, I'm not a big fan of Napoleon Total War. I think they were both very um, awkward games to begin with, just by the very nature of the time period they'd chosen to set them in. They were both very buggy uh, upon release and quite a while until after they'd been finally fully patched after like a year long patching cycle which was atrocious. But um, you can get far, far more fully immersed in a game of Romus Rectum, in a campaign of this. Um, not in the least thanks to a lot of the RPG elements that the mod makers have actually added to the campaign, like the different uh, types of characters you can have, the titles they can be awarded, that sort of thing, the ancillaries, the traits. It's all been radically overhauled, you know. The city management has been uh, improved a great deal. And, you know, on the whole, I would say this is an excellent mod, you know, it's well worth your time. Um, if you've got Rome Total War, give it a goddamn try, you know. Um, it will cost you nothing. Save the price of the actual game itself, you know. Definitely worth a try. I've, uh, I must admit, I've not spent as many hours on this as I did the original Romus Rectum, which was kind of a fairly basic mod with a few main gameplay tweaks and things. Um, but I, I, what I, from what I've seen, over the months I've had this, I've absolutely loved. The uh, games... One thing I will say in favour of the Zero-Tone recruitment uh, in the campaign is that it adds a sense of logistics to the game. Military logistics that the original just didn't have. You find yourself, you, you often find yourself having to organise recruitment on a mass scale. You need to organise supply lines. You need to organise reinforcements. You often you have to build quite a lot of forts. Forts you kind of rarely built in the original Rome Total War. They were kind of a bit superfluous. Um, but in this, forts are very very useful. In fact, they're necessary. In fact, especially when you've got uh, river crossings that need guarding and such like. Uh, you will often reach a point later in the campaign where the barbarian hordes actually become incredibly powerful 
Um, the campaign map, and the enemies on the campaign map in Rome Total War have kind of famously always been a bit of a pushover, but in this, once the uh, Barbarian factions especially gain momentum, then you're in some serious trouble if you're playing someone like Rome. You really need to kind of fortify your frontiers and uh, make sure they don't collapse in the late game. Of course, it helps that you have access to all the late game legionaries like these fellows over here, which can take, as you can see, a hell of a lot of punishment, you know. That is a big pile of Celtic corpses over there. You know, there's, a far, there's far more dead Celts than there are Romans. And like these guys over here, they're still freaking going. You know, they're exhausted, they're unhappy over taking casualties, but they're still fighting, they're still eager, you know. They are going to die eventually, in fact I'm probably going to have to speed up the time just so we can get to the end of the battle, but yeah, it's pretty neat. As last stands go, this one was fairly epic, I feel. Oh, even the archers are getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat now. It's all become a bit desperate. Might we might we have been able to hold the line if we'd uh, if we'd not nuked our own general? Who knows? The other thing I will say that's great about this mod is the sense of historical accuracy. Um, one thing I like about Romus Directum is it achieves the, the the correct balance between keeping the game fun and being anal about the historical accuracy. What they've done with this game is they've achieved a perfect balance with that as far as I'm concerned. For example, all these uniforms and you know the things the like outfits these guys are wearing are relatively accurate within reasonable levels. Obviously, um, you suffer the limitations of the game engine itself in the sense that uh, everyone's a clone of the guy standing next to him and there's no unit variation from man to man but that's just a limitation of the game engine itself unfortunately that cannot be overcome uh, however the uh, the outfits they are actually wearing are fairly accurate um, however at the same time they've um, they've t taken a few liberties for example if technically speaking in the time frame that Rome Total War is actually set the uh, I'm trying to find an example of one of them now, but I think they're all dead. Oh dear! Um, like this fella lying on the ground here. The this guy, he's wearing a what I think is called a Lorica Segmentato. It's that it's that iconic Roman armor and helmet gear and that square scutum. Now, technically speaking, from what I remember, um, that kind of armor and that kind of those kind of weapons they weren't available to the Romans in the time period the Rome Total War was actually set. So we're talking the like. Uh, <coughs> the late Republic uh, and the early Empire. Uh, the Lorica Segmentata, that kind of plate armor, was not simply not invented. It wasn't in. So, well, even even if there were a few examples of it at the time, it certainly was not in mass use. However, the mod makers for the game they decided, you know what? You don't play a strategy game about ancient Rome and not want to see the classic red-clad plate-armoured Roman legionaries with the big square shields and the little gladius short swords, you know. Um, so they've kind of taken a few liberties and they put it into the game anyway and basically said, that's what people want to see. We're going to make you work quite hard to get them. There's like a big tech tree you have to work down towards to get your legions up to the full level. There's a lot of, lot of stuff in between. There's Obviously you start off the game back in the wars with Carthage when Hannibal was rampaging around the Italian peninsula. And you have the very, 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 very early looking legions at that point. Back, back when the Roman legions were actually really not the kind of death dealing, super efficient, world conquering military force that they were later on. Um, and that makes the early game quite challenging, in fact, because a lot of the enemies you're facing are on an even footing with you in terms, in terms of man for man combat power. Um, as opposed to this, where, as you can clearly see, even though we are losing, each of these legionaries here, probably, statistically speaking, has probably killed far more than his own number. You know. Um, oh, there we go. Here goes the uh, countdown timer. Even if these guys weren't going to die in the next hour or so, we now have uh, just under three minutes before the game ends because they've captured the central plaza. So these guys are pretty screwed either way. Although, if I, I, I were in their shoes, I wouldn't surrender because they'd probably be in a lot of trouble if they did. Sold into slavery, executed. Um, the Celts were not kind to those they captured in battle, it has to be said. 
Although, that said, the Romans weren't particularly kind either, so... It's kind of a kill or be killed scenario here. If they can't run away, they better fight to the death, because uh, otherwise they're pretty screwed. A lot of corpses over here again, mostly Celtic, from what I can see. Uh, one or two horses over there from our general's bodyguard. These guys are kind of just standing around. They're quite content to hold the uh, central plaza there and wait for the time to tick down instead of losing more men needlessly fighting these traps up here. Who are still going. They're still steady morale. They uh, are right, shaken now. I think they might be wavering. Yeah, they, I think these guys might be finally about to break. Um, but all credit to him. Dead excited for Rome 2 Total War as well. Um, I have no idea if my computer will be able to run it, because famously Total War games have put, uh, put a lot of stress on your hardware. Um, even the ones that have been quite well optimised, like Shogun 2, is still... Um, if you haven't got a good PC, there's no hope in hell of you being able to play it, and Rome 2 looks like it's going to be very, very ambitious in terms of the amount of computational crap going on on the screen at once, so I'm a little worried that I won't be able to run it, but I think I should be able to, at least on maybe some lower settings. Um, I used to be able. To, I used to have to tolerate Empire Total War with small unit sizes and terrible graphical settings. Same for Medieval 2 back before that. Um, so I'm quite tolerant when it comes to my in-game performance. When it comes to an RTS like this, it's not like a first-person shooter where your performance is going to be seriously adversely affected by a low frame rate. Really, uh, you can play a Total War game and get about 20 frames per second, and you can still have fun. Um, one of the great things about it, really, actually. I think it's one of the reasons why they're quite so popular, and it's one of the reasons why they're so popular with um, that kind of demographic that does not have, you know, high-powered gaming PCs. Like, if you go to um, so some, somewhere like the Total War Center forums, you can see uh, there's plenty of people who still play Rome Total War because they don't have very good PCs, you know, and they rely on mods like these, like in the modding community in general, to keep injecting new content into their games, and they are, to their credit, continuing to do that to this day. Um, defeat is ours. A heroic defeat. A close defeat, apparently. General Vibius, men deployed 827, kills 1177 to uh, his 742 kills. So yeah, we uh, we may have lost. This may have been heroic's last stand, but we bloodied their nose by Jingo, we did. We killed far more than our own number. Pretty damn good. Let's have a look at the battle statistics. Who are our outstanding units? So we look. <laughs> these guys are wiped out, lost, um, lost experience apparently. Um, who are the really outstanding ones though? Casualties sustained and reflected. Let's have a look. Who got the most? Ah, the stone throwing siege ballista. To their credit, despite the fact that they were a bunch of useless bastards most of the time, did in fact inflict 214 casualties, which is good. Um, after him, though, it looks like Legio XX Valeria Victorious Cohort Number 3 are the outstanding men of the battle. They lost 103 men, killed 158 Celts. They had none of them left at the end of the battle. They were all dead. Oh, wait, no. I tell a lie. The best ones were, in fact, Cohort 5, who had 22 men left by the end of it. So that's these guys over here, presumably. Um, they killed 165 men, lost 81. So well done to them. Stories will be told, I'm sure, of their heroics. Probably. If word of this ever reaches Rome, that is. It may well not. Maybe one of them will escape captivity and come back and spin a yarn about what happened. But yeah, no. Um... Gosh, these units do look damn good. So it's a shame I can't zoom in any closer, really, to get a good look at them. But, um, they look damn good. In a game of this age, in a mod for a game of this age, you know, the quality of the texture work is just quite astonishing, frankly. But there it is. Anyway. Merry Christmas, everyone. This has been me, Jingles. Wishing you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that kind of crap. Um, have a Happy New Year as well, if I don't get in touch with you before then. Uh, following the New Year, we're going to be back to normal programming, essentially. Uh, we'll be back to doing Kaiserreich, we'll be back to doing Oblivion. 
uh, all that jazz. Maybe some new stuff too. You never know. You never know indeed. But uh, until then, ta-da everyone. See you again soon.